Hello, I'm Paul Pluter and welcome to Paul Pluter Prestige. Today I'd like to talk about investing in watches. And uh, this is a very interesting topic. The year is 2011. The economy is uh, its pretty stagnant. It's very uh, flat. There's a, uh, we've just, we've gone through the global financial crisis and uh, I think the world is a very tough place. And uh, the question is, what should the astute investor do to make money in watches? And uh, the first thing I want to, I want to put a caveat on this because many people, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think you are better off putting your money into real estate and stocks for a long term. However, if you consider that a wristwatch that's in your possession, you get the enjoyment from, from wearing it and possessing it and showing it to people. And if you consider that a dividend, maybe you should consider some investments in luxury wristwatches. The truth is, is that we all don't own, just like the Patek ad says, you never actually own a Patek, you merely look after it for the next generation, is such a true adage and it can be applied to anything from real estate to luxury cars. Most of us here, if we're lucky, will live to about 82 years of age, but um, that doesn't mean that we can take it with us into the afterlife. The real question is, is whilst we are here for those 82 years, do we think we deserve a beautiful wristwatch or do we want to wear a piece of shit we bought from a petrol station when we had a fuel discount voucher? Luxury watches are something to be enjoyed, something to be savoured and shared with the connoisseur alike. They're a great vehicle for fun and prestige. The wonderful thing is, if you compare an investment in luxury watches compared to, say, a luxury automobile, the wristwatch will always outperform a automobile in almost all cases. And that's not only because if you buy the right wristwatch on the second-hand market, there should be no depreciation. Also, by buying the right wristwatch, when the economy recovers, you're going to get a massive upswing when these brands are in demand again. Now let's just clarify my stance on this. Firstly, what should you buy? Okay, so, so let's, let's, let's hypothetically pretend we've got a pool of about $20,000. What should you buy for $20,000? And uh, you've got the, the collector has a few choices. Should you get a plastic sea dweller? A vintage piece that Rolex is renowned for. Should you get a modern piece? Should you buy a used piece like new condition on the used market? What should you buy? And there's no right or wrong answer and hindsight will show us there were some mistakes and there were some successes. But I think you've got to firstly work out what do you really like. In my case, being Paul Pluto Prestige, I like the most prestigious, the most highly sought after brands on the face of the earth. Now, in my opinion, I think you're best to go for newsed pieces. That's pieces that are in really good condition, but under 30 years of age. You're also best to go for the biggest brand name pieces, Patek. Rolex, Audemars Piguet, Vacheron, Jaeger Le Coultre, Breguet, Lange. There's quite an extensive list. I'd even include IWC. I'd even include um, Gerard Perigay to some extent. And of course Zenith. But which pieces in this range here are true gems? And which pieces are dogs? Firstly, the most important thing is, no matter what you buy, it must be mechanical. There's no point investing money in a quartz piece, unless it's very cheap. 
whilst a bargain court's peace has a massive upswing when the negativity with courts goes away and courts is admired for the advancement that it is. Courts will never be a blue chip investment. It will always be on the outer. So to the first question, rule one, peace must be mechanical. Rule two, the peace, should it be steel, should it be gold, should it be platinum? Well, there's no clear cut rule here, but obviously I think gold itself has a massive upswing. Platinum is highly desired and steel represents good buying for the long term. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer here as long as you stick with some truly magnificent brands. So, to answer the question, point two, what metal? It doesn't really matter, but my advice is to stay away from rubber, stay away from carbon fiber and exotic materials, which are fads, which I believe won't hold much substance in the market. The next point is, what pieces should you go for? I think you should go for pieces that are design icons for each of those huge upper luxury brands. And this is the key. Buy design icons from these brands. Okay, let's get back to the question. What would I do with $20,000 to invest in a lux upper luxury wristwatch? What would I buy? Would I buy multiple? Would I buy one? I think personally the best bang per buck piece at the moment is a Patek annual calendar 5035. These are available for slightly over $20,000 and they represent excellent buying. They feature a solid gold case, they feature Patek's first annual calendar movement and they also feature the beautiful eyes without the moon phase. This piece at $20,000 I think is a lot better buying than a plastic sea dweller. I'm Paul Pluter from Paul Pluter Prestige. Tell me what investment you think I should make.